Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hope you all had a good weekend and had a good time in God's presence. Um, may I request somebody to please pray with the class and we will get started. Can I pray? Go ahead, Divya, please. Sure. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us uh, to come before you, Lord, to learn uh, uh, more from your word, Lord. You help us, Father, that our hearts, our spirits, Lord, our ears, Lord, will uh, be receptive, Lord, to your word. Uh, Father, to the uh, nudging of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray, Father, for your grace uh, upon your wisdom, upon Pastor Rashish and each of us here, Father, Lord. Uh, wherever we need, uh, Lord, your, uh, uh, Father, changes to uh, be made in our lives, Father. We pray we surrender ourselves unto you, Father, Lord, that uh, you may uh, renew our minds, Father, with your holy word and transform our lives, Father, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. So in this course, um, 214 on developing the human spirit, uh, we are in the section that we are talking about uh, the interactions. We're just trying to look at a little bit on the interactions, the human spirit and its interactions with the spiritual realm. And I will give you the notes on this, uh, maybe, uh, I guess, maybe next week, before uh, class next week. Um, but this is kind of laying the groundwork for our next chapter when we talk, talk about the functions, uh, the faculties of the human spirit and then the functions of the human spirit. So what we started talking about was the human spirit that is our spirit and the interactions with the spiritual realm, how our spirit interacts with the spiritual realm. Now, of course, uh, we want to stay within the word of God and not go off into, you know, fantasy world and or not go off into the wrong things. So we are strictly staying with the word of God and using the word of God as the basis for our understanding on this aspect, how the human spirit interacts with the spiritual realm. And uh, last week, we were focusing on how God works uh, with the born-again spirit, human spirit. So how God works with the born-again spirit. Uh, we talked about some things like uh, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit is testifying. He is speaking to our spirit. So the Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit. So the word testify or bear witness means he is giving evidence or giving conviction for certain things in your spirit. And that's where, you know, like we mentioned last week, conviction that we are children of God, conviction that we are saved, conviction on what God has called us to do, the call of God, etc. It comes in our spirit because the Holy Spirit bears witness or gives evidence or gives conviction in our spirit. The Holy Spirit, secondly, we also said the Holy Spirit teaches or gives revelation to our human spirit. So, of course, uh, we are going to read the word. You know, we, we study the word. But uh, insight into the word and understanding of spiritual things is a combination of the written scriptures, but that illumination comes from the Holy Spirit. He's the one who opens our eyes to see these things. Uh, and so the Holy Spirit teaches or gives revelation to our human spirit. He, you know, Jesus even said, he will teach you, he will remind you, he will bring things to your remembrance. So at the right time, the Holy Spirit quickens, he awakens things in our spirit. So we, we have to be open, you know, open to it. Thirdly, we talked about the fruit of the spirit. The Holy Spirit works in our human spirit to cause the virtues of Christ uh, to be formed and to be revealed through us. So he causes you know, love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, those things to be formed in our human spirit. It becomes a part of us. This is how we, you know, we, this is what we become 
And then, of course, it's expressed through our lives, uh, through our emotions and our, the way we live. And so God works. And uh, the fourth one, number four, is God works through our spirit. The manifestations of the spirit take place through our spirit and then through our um, human person, physical person. So the Holy Spirit manifests himself. He reveals himself. How? Through our spirit, through our mind and body. So example, a word of knowledge uh, uh, may be given uh, in your spirit. And you process it with your mind. Okay, this is what I have to say. These are the words I'm supposed to use. And then you say it and you know, express it. But the Holy Spirit is manifesting himself through that word of knowledge or through that word of wisdom or through that gift of healing, gifts of healing or working miracles. But he releases it into our spirit. And then from there, our mind and our body, you know, cooperate and we release it. So four important things we said, right? Uh, on, on how God works with our human spirit. Right? He bears witness, he giving conviction. He gives revelation, number two. He produces the fruit of the spirit. And number four, he manifests himself. So that's what ministry is about. It's God manifesting himself through us. When you love somebody, when you show compassion to somebody, when you help somebody, you know, God is manifesting himself through you. Right? And it starts off in the spirit and it flows out. So um, developing sensitivity to the spirit in our human spirit is so important, which is where the faculties of our spirit come in. Right? Because it is through the faculties of our spirit that we are able to, you know, uh, to commune with the Holy Spirit, to uh, pick up or to uh, receive what he is telling us through our faculties. And then we express it uh, in, in the words we say and what we do, so on. Today, I want to stretch us a little bit, maybe more than a little bit. I want us to look at spiritual experiences in scripture. Okay. Uh, uh, the reason I'm st uh, I'm stretching out, uh, this is going to be a little stretch. Okay. But I'm doing, we're doing this now so that when we start talking about the next chapter, which is the faculties of the spirit, then we'll be able to say, oh, okay, uh, I can connect whatever I've learned in this chapter, which is how God works with our human spirit and the spiritual experiences that are possible. Okay. Uh, oh, the faculties of my spirit, God uses that to give us these spiritual experiences. But of course, yeah, every spiritual experience has to be uh, verified. It has to, you know, uh, kept in subjection to the truth of the written word of God. But I, but I want us to be open to these kinds of spiritual experiences. Now, if you if if we, if we go, go into the Bible and we start from Genesis chapter 1 and we go to Revelation 22, the Bible is full of spiritual experiences that people had. And we must, you see, People have changed. We have changed. Times have changed. But God has not changed. And so God can work today the way he worked in the Bible. I know the Bible is a book that has, that records things that happened thousands of years ago. Times have changed, of course. But God hasn't. Our human spirit hasn't. I mean, the human spirit is still capable of the way it was, the faculties with which it was created in the beginning. And so we need to be open to the ways in which God would work with each of us. Now, of course, you know, one of the things we do understand is that God doesn't give everybody all the spiritual experiences, neither does he give everybody identical spiritual experiences. Uh, we are aware of that, right? So, you know, just because Moses had it, does it mean it'll happen the same way with you and with me? Or, you know, we will look at some examples. But what I want us to do is be open, be open spiritually, be open to these experiences. Uh, of course, we have to be discerning. Uh, we know that 
there is a dark side, which is evil spirits try to imitate the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know, you know, Paul warned us that even they, the angels of Satan sometimes pretend and come as the angels of light, and we are, we are aware of that. But that should not cause us to completely block out the genuine spiritual experiences that God wants to give to us in our spirit. The purpose is for us to experience him more, to love him more, and reveal him more. Right? So the purpose of these spiritual experiences is the revelation. For us to know him, God reveals himself to us, and also God reveals himself through us. Revelation. Revelation to us, and revelation through us. For us to know him more and us to make him known better to people. Right? So that's the objective here in these spiritual experiences. So uh, I hope today uh, we will touch upon some of these things and it'll stretch us a bit, just open up us, open us up a bit. Uh, we will start off with First Peter chapter one, please. Uh, and could somebody read verses nine through twelve? I'm I'm going to speak a little fast because I want to cover a lot of ground um, uh, today, and uh, so hope you don't mind. Uh, and I realize we just have uh, a month and a little over a month and two weeks to finish things, so uh, I'm just trying to pick up a little bit of speed. First Peter chapter one verses nine through twelve, please. Shall I, shall I read, Pastor? Please go ahead. First Peter chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, who was in them, was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and glories that would follow. Amen. Amen. Could you read verse 12 also, please? Avni? To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Amen. So, I want us to read this passage to start off here because I want, when we go into the Old Testament, look at some of these experiences these people had. And of course, there are many. We're not going to look at all of them. I'm just going to point out certain, certain of those experiences. Uh, what we must understand is it, is it was the Spirit of Christ. Look at verse 11. The Spirit of Christ was at work in these prophets of old. So it's not, this is not the work of a different Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is not different from the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. He is God. The same Spirit of God was at work. Uh, the New Testament Holy Spirit is the same as the Old Testament Holy Spirit, just to put it plain and simple. Right? He hasn't changed. Same Spirit of God. And this Holy Spirit who's working in you and me today, who worked in the early church, is the same one who worked in the people in the Old Testament. Same. And what did he do? He showed them things. He spoke to them things that they had to search out, verse 11 said, so they had to search out, they had to try to figure it out. It was beyond their minds to understand. They had to search it out. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't something they understood right away. So searching what? And also, they also had to understand time. Oh, when is he talking about this? That means he was speaking of things they had no um, context, neither did they have any time. It, it wasn't for their time. You know, it was outside their time and space, so, so to speak. So the Holy Spirit was showing them things 
that they had to search out. It was beyond their own immediate understanding. And it was also beyond their own immediate time. So he was showing things way into the future. Things, such things, right? And so they had to search it out. They tried to understand what manner of time. And the Holy Spirit was telling them, verse 12, that they were actually speaking of things that were meant for people in another generation. That is, you and I, New Testament believers. So the points I want to get across here from this passage is the same Holy Spirit who worked then is same Holy Spirit, same Spirit of Christ worked in the Old Testament prophets. Sometimes in our minds, you know, because we we so divide Old Testament, New Testament, sometimes in an unspoken way, we also think oh, Holy Spirit is different. No, no, same Holy Spirit, same God. The dispensations are different, of course. In the Old Testament, only certain people, you know, the prophets, priests, and kings experience the anointing. But in the New Testament, every child of God experiences the work of the Spirit. So it's much better, right? but same Holy Spirit. So think about some of the spiritual experiences that people had in the Old Testament. And uh, I'm just picking out a few of these uh, men of God and people of God in the old, and then we will talk about a few in the new. The idea is I want to point out certain things that happened in these spiritual experiences so that we can be open to similar experiences. I'm not saying same or identical, but I'm talking similar. That means God still speaks. He may not copy the same thing, but there will be similar experiences for you and me. Right? So, example. Moses. Now, Moses had many spiritual experiences, you know, with, uh, with God, especially from the time he began his ministry, you know, from the burning bush onwards. Uh, and, 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 you know, you, you could talk about the burning bush itself. Imagine a bush that's on fire. So God is using something in that visible world to get his attention. And then on. But uh, I want us to just go to one little passage in Exodus, the 24th chapter. Uh, just to talk a little bit about some of these experiences. Exodus chapter 24, so we'll all turn there. Verses 15 to 18, Exodus 24. 15 to 18, please. Somebody could read that for us. Then Moses went after him. Go ahead, um, uh, whoever read first. Um, I'll read it. Go ahead. Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on mountain Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Mm. Now, now, we know that uh, this kind of an exp uh, this experience repeated many times in Moses' ministry time. In the, in the years of his ministry, we're just reading one passage. But I want, to th I want us to think about this. There is, you know, look at verse 15. There was a cloud, which, which was actually the presence of God, God himself coming in the cloud, right? So God had told Moses many times, you know, uh, and you can look this up in Exodus 19, verse 9, where God says, I come to you in the thick cloud. So the, 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 the Exodus 19, verse 9. So this thick cloud, what is it? It's not, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The atmospheric cloud. It's not a rain cloud that we're talking about. This thick cloud is God's presence manifest. 
it is God coming. But this is only a visible expression of the, of the presence of God. So here in Exodus 24, verse 15, when it says, a cloud covered the mountain, we're not thinking of an atmospheric cloud, you know, a rain cloud or something like that. That's not what it is. God said, I come to you in the thick cloud. That means this cloud is God coming. It's his presence. And Moses is climbing up the mountain into this cloud. And it says, six days. It's like this. Six days. And then on the seventh day, God is speaking to Moses. And not only was the there a cloud, but verse 17 says it, there was this consuming fire. So that's again another visible expression. Consuming fire. Thick cloud, fire. So the fire and the cloud, we know it. That it was it is very much a part of the journey of the people of Israel. So there's a consuming fire. So what were the people seeing from, you know, uh, uh, below the mountain? They saw the cloud. They saw the consuming fire. Moses is already there seven days. And verse 18 says, he went into this. And he was in the cloud and the fire for 40 days. Now, it doesn't mention certain things. It doesn't, it doesn't mention any, you know, like people taking him food, uh, uh, you know, uh, Moses eating, whatever. That's, that's all that is unsaid. But we can know from other passages when people encounter, and we're just reading this one, but we know from other passages from Moses and also from Elijah that there are times when we encounter the presence of God, a natural laws or natural biological processes are suspended. So, so what are we saying? We're saying, look, we're talking about 47, at least 47 days. Because seven days plus 40 days, 40, at least 47 days. Moses is in the presence of God, the glory presence of God. There is no indication Moses, you know, went to eat or went to sleep or any of that. And based on other passages, we can say he didn't have to eat. He didn't have to sleep. He was caught up in the glory presence of God. But in that presence, natural biological processes were suspended temporarily, not needed for 47 days. So there has God, God's presence ceased doing such things? Answer is no. And I just want to leave that thought with you. And we will see this again, you know, in other, other, other experiences, spiritual experiences. That there are times the human spirit so connects with God. So the objective here is for Moses to meet with God. But in that spiritual experience of a man meeting with God in order to hear from God, so on. The presence of, God, presence of God is suspending natural biological processes for that period of time. Not needed. Overridden. Another um, person we want to look at is in Isaiah. We just touch upon one of his experiences. You go with me to Isaiah chapter 6. And um, there we see about Isaiah having, uh, this is Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 8, uh, where Isaiah is having a vision. So 
He's here on Earth. He gives us the year in which this vision happened. It happened when the year King Uzziah died. And he's having a vision and he's seeing right into heaven. Spiritual experience, right? Here on Earth, but God is helping him see heaven or is opening his eyes, he's seeing heaven. Now, how far is heaven? We don't know. But this is spiritually, it's like as though he's there. As though heaven is just, you know, like a few feet away. But he's seeing heaven. And he's seeing God on the throne, the Lord on the throne. He is seeing the train of his robe. That means he had this long robe that filled the temple. So, it, again, God is showing him something that he can identify with. This train of the robe is, um, you know, the longer the robe, the longer the train, it's more majestic, it describes the majesty of the person. You know, and usually they'll have many people carrying the robe, the flowing robe with which, you know, the, the king or the queen, the royalty wore. So he's saying, I saw the train of the robe, it just filled the whole temple. Meaning uh, God's majesty, God's glory just filled the whole temple. And then he describes these angelic beings. I notice something here. He is not only seeing, but he's also hearing. This is verse 3. He is hearing what they are talking. Where is Isaiah? He's here on earth. Where is he looking into heaven? He's seeing everything so as it was so near. He's seeing and he's also hearing. He's hearing what the angelic beings are talking. Now, normally you and I don't hear what spiritual beings are talking to each other. Right? Here the cherubims, cherubims or seraphims, the worshipping angels are crying to each other. Holy, holy, holy is all of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So he is seeing, he is hearing. How? Not with the physical eyes, but with the spiritual eyes. So there are faculties of our human spirit, which are given the privilege to interact with the spiritual realm. So he is seeing, not with natural eyes, or not with the natural ears. He's seeing the spirit while he's seeing heaven's throne, throne room, He's seeing the Lord, he's seeing the glory, he's seeing the robe, he's seeing the temple, he's seeing the cherubims. He's also hearing what they're saying. And there is the voice of him. Verse 4, it says, the voice of him uh, that, that seems to fill the whole place. And of course, Isaiah responds, you know, so I'm a man of unclean lips and so on. And then look at something very interesting, verse 6. There seems to be some sort of a interaction taking place between Isaiah and the spiritual realm. What's happening? Verse 6. The seraphim is taking a live coal from the altar and touching his mouth. Think about it again. Live coal altar in heaven touching Isaiah's mouth. And he says, your iniquity is taken away, your sin is purged. Now obviously it's not in the physical because if it had happened in the physical, you know, he would have had burnt lips. And if you take a hot coal and put on your lips, it's going to hurt. So obviously it's not a physical experience. It's a spiritual experience. But he's talking about coal. He's talking about mouth. And he's talking about lips. So the inner person, the spirit person, is actually experiencing this. So the spirit person is the human spirit, the inner person, the spirit person is actually engaging with the spirit realm in this manner. 
where things of the spirit are touching the human spirit. And of course, there's things, there's a purpose in all this. In, in this particular case, it's purging, cleansing uh, the inner person. And at that moment, he hears the voice of the Lord. How does he hear the voice of the Lord? Not in the human ear, but in his spirit ear. The ears of his human spirit. He is hearing the voice of the Lord. And he receives his commission. So I want you and me to open our spirit and say, Lord, these experiences can happen to us today. Why? Because the same spirit of Christ who worked in all these prophets is at work in you and me today. Think about Ezekiel. And we will give some time for questions. I just want to cover some ground and then we will discuss things. Think about Ezekiel. I want to highlight just two uh, parts of Ezekiel's experiences. I mean, throughout the book of Ezekiel, he has amazing spiritual experiences. But I just want to highlight a couple of them. If you go with me to Ezekiel chapter 3, uh, Ezekiel 3, verses 1 to 4. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Okay, so the Lord is speaking to Ezekiel and it actually, you know, everything starts actually from chapter one. Uh, we can see a lot of these things from chapter one, but I'm just highlighting something here. In chapter three, the Lord speaks to Ezekiel. He says, verse one, eat the scroll and go speak. Eat this scroll. Then he says, verse 2, I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the scroll. Verse 3, Son of man, feed your belly, fill your stomach with this scroll. Then he says, it was like, my mouth was like honey and sweetness. And then verse 4, he says, go speak my words to them. Now, if you think about these, this little experience, okay. Now, there, there are many, many experiences Ezekiel had. I'm just highlighting one or two of them, few of them. You think about this experience. It's not a physical experience. Obviously, physically, we don't chew on a scroll and <laughs> we're not going to be able to eat it and swallow it. And it's not going to go in our stomach physically. So that's completely ruled out. It is not a physical experience experience so it is a spiritual experience okay spiritual means the human spirit is experiencing this what all do we see here of course first of all he's hearing God speak so the human spirit can hear it's got the faculty to hear with these faculties we'll talk about in our next chapter but I'm just highlighting these things He's got the faculty. He's hearing God speak. Second, God is telling, eat the scroll. And verse 2, he opened, I opened my mouth. What mouth? Not the physical, spiritual. Mouth of the human spirit. Eat the scroll. Verse 3, feed your belly or your stomach. Verse 3, in my mouth, it was sweetness. He could taste. He got that sense of taste. And then God commissions him, go prophesy. So we're saying the human spirit having, in, in its interactions with the spiritual realm, it's having experiences just very much like what we would say the, uh, the natural body. Right, just like the natural body, like the natural body, but actually the body is a copy of the spirit. The body is temporal; the spirit is eternal. So, what's eternal is more real than what's temporal. So, the body follows the spirit. Now, the spirit 
is hearing, it is seeing, it's eating, it's tasting, and it's receiving commission. So, is it possible that the human spirit can have such experiences today? And that's what I want to impress on you and me. The answer is yes, that even our human time has changed, times have changed. Yes, Ezekiel lived over 2000 years ago, uh, but our human spirit has not changed. God has not changed. The Holy Spirit who is ministering to our human spirit has not changed. Therefore, we must be open to such experiences. One of the reasons we don't have such experiences is we've blocked it out. So even if God begins to give us something immediately, God, sorry, no, it cannot be. <laughs> it doesn't fit into our framework, our theological framework. It doesn't fit. So immediately we block it or we just turn away from it. And so, you know, God cannot proceed. Because anything more he says, he knows we are going to reject. So why should he speak or give us that kind of experience to communicate to us? Now, understand the purpose of this whole experience was so that, you know, Ezekiel could be commissioned to serve the people. But God is doing it in this manner. And in the same chapter, uh, we have, you know, if you look at verses 12 and 14, uh, verse 12 and 13 and 14, same chapter, you see something more. Verse 12, Ezekiel 3, verse 12 says, The Spirit lifted me up. And I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from the, his place. And I heard the noise of the wings, the noise of the wheels. Verse 14. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Now, think about this. The Spirit lifted me up and took me. Now, in, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, many times Ezekiel has this experience. And it's, it's interesting. If you just, just go through the book of Ezekiel and, uh, you know, point out, uh, you'll find it in chapter 8, verse 3. You'll find it in chapter 11, verse 1, also in chapter 43, verse 5. I put it in the notes. and When you, when you get the notes, you'll see it. But he repeats many times. The Spirit took me and lifted me. So there are two kinds of transportation experiences that can take place. At least two. Okay. One is the Holy Spirit causing your human spirit to travel in the realm of the spirit, the spiritual realm. That's legitimate. Ezekiel had it many times. Right? The Holy Spirit taking him in the spirit and showing him certain things that are happening. You know, uh, the Holy Spirit showing him what's going on in the temple, so on. It's a, it is hard to tell whether in some of the cases in Ezekiel, whether it was exclusively in the spirit or was he physically transported. And sometimes it seems like he was physically moved, but sometimes it seems like it was in the spirit. And so we kept keep both open because we know, as in the case of uh, Philip in Acts chapter 8, physical transportation by the Holy Spirit is possible. The Holy Spirit takes you from one place and puts you in another place. That is possible. And we, as we see in Paul's example, spiritual travel is also possible. But it's very interesting here that you know, if you focus on, on the spiritual, spiritual travel, that means the human spirit is traveling 
and and God is exposing the sins in, in, in Ezekiel's case. He's showing him, look, this is the sin that is happening here. This is what is going on here. He's showing him. So that means physically he's in one place, but the Holy Spirit is taking his human spirit. He's going and seeing what's happening behind closed doors in the inner court, or he's going and seeing what's happening. Ezekiel. And we know, we, we have some experiences in the New Testament with Philip and Paul and later on with John as well. So we know that this is not just, you know, only for an Old Testament prophet, but it's happened in the New Testament. So just a few more minutes and I'll, I'll, I'll have to close. So you can look in Daniel's case, his spiritual experiences. Uh, in Daniel's case, you'll see that, uh, you know, his physical body was so affected by his spiritual experiences. Uh, uh, Daniel writes, and this is in chapter 7, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse uh, 1 and verse 15. Now, when he has these dreams and visions that God shows him, uh, Daniel 7, verse 15, he says, you know, uh, my body, uh, I was, my spirit within my body was grieved, and the visions of my head troubled me. That it's, it's, it's so affected him physically, the spiritual experience of the visions and dreams that he would receive from God. And we, we see also very interesting in chapter 10 that a spiritual experience can weaken the body. A spiritual experience can also strengthen the body. Daniel's, uh, when he encountered the angel, uh, he fell as one dead, flat on his face. But then the angel strengthened him. Stand up, Daniel. You know, so it ha you know, the, the spiritual is touching the natural realm while he's having a spiritual experience. Okay. Paul the Apostle, uh, sorry, we mentioned Philip, who was spiritually transported. Paul the Apostle, again, had so many spiritual experiences right from his Damascus Road experience. Uh, he writes in Second Corinthians, he was caught up into heaven and he was shown things which he shouldn't even utter. And John the Beloved, his body was here on earth, but in the spiritual, he went, he saw, he heard, he had conversation. And I can just imagine the natural man was, the physical man was writing the things he was seeing, but a spiritual man was experiencing, hearing, seeing, having conversations. And the natural man was writing and recording everything that the spiritual man was hearing, seeing, experiencing, and so on. Okay, so main point. In our interactions with the spiritual realm, we need to be open to the kinds of things we see in the Bible. I'm not talking about going outside the Bible. No. I'm just saying, whatever is in the Bible, today, we must be open to it. So why? For these two reasons we said in the very beginning. First, for us to know God. Second, for us to make Him known to others, to know God and to make him known. That was the objective in the, in the Bible. You see, when God gave these experiences, it wasn't just for fun. It's, there's a purpose behind it. The people who received the experiences were strengthened and then they strengthened others. So today, open up your I shouldn't say your, we must open up our spirit. Say, God, if it's in the Bible, I'm ready for it. I desire to have these kinds of experiences. I desire to 
my spirit to have these experiences. So this, I want to close with this point. We'll take questions. So this brings us to the next chapter, which is the faculties of our human spirit. Because God is going to use these faculties, like you, you know, what you see, what you hear, what you taste, and what you feel, and uh, the things that he can do. He's going to use these faculties with these experiences to communicate to us. So to get started, you know, we should be open to the very simple, simple things. And then from there, God will take us on into more and more of these spiritual experiences that we see in the Bible. Okay, so let me pause here. I think we have about four minutes for questions. We'll take it up and I'll supply, I'll, I'll make these notes available before next class. In the next class, we get into the faculties. Any questions, please? I know I went, spoke a little fast, but um, any questions? Mastipa, can I ask? Go ahead, please. Uh, you said we should be open to it, but uh, can we even ask for it? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. it is God who himself decides like whom he would give such an experience like? That's my question. Yeah. So I think our first is being open. Our second is asking, but uh, uh, asking or desiring for it, but with, with the purpose, right? So... Uh, from our side, when we ask, so the Bible does say in the New Testament, you come in First Corinthians chapter 12, First Corinthians 14, the Bible tells us to desire spiritual gifts, to so desire these things, um, uh, not to despise prophecies, not to despise these things. Uh, so we can ask, but we don't necessarily ask God saying, God, I want to travel from Bangalore to Delhi. Just give me a free trip. That's not the point. Uh, the point is, uh, you know, a purpose, right? So just, you know, it could be a general or a specific purpose. General purpose would be God, I pray you'll speak to me so that I can be a blessing to people, you know, whom I'm serving. God, I pray you'll, you'll, you'll reveal things to me. Uh, speak to me, show me whom I need to talk to, whom I need to call, or if there's uh, something that you want to get across to somebody, God, uh, so you're praying general prayers uh, uh, that, uh, you know, that you are uh, making yourself available in a general sense or spiritually uh, or specifically. So, you know, every time you go before you go to minister, you say, God, I just make myself open to you. And, uh, and uh, you know, so that's how we learn to flow in the gifts of the spirit as well. Right. So uh, we we do that. Just so specifically, you can pray before you go for a ministering, or you bought a person, you're about to call somebody. God, show me something, or uh, or you're going to minister somewhere. God, show me something. You know, so that's specific or general as well. So, I, so the answer to your question is yes. Uh, we pray and ask, but ask it with a purpose. Yeah. Um, Christopher, your your question about one or two personal spiritual experience. I mean, and just quickly uh, mention this, um, maybe, yeah, just uh, just a couple of things. Um, yeah, so just, just to give you, like, okay, two Sundays back, uh, so not yesterday, which is 20th March, but the Sunday before, which was March uh, 13th. So for example, all right, in Central, when I was ministering, uh, just you know, while I was standing in the in the worship time, I was standing you know, in the congregation. Suddenly, I was uh, I was just be beginning to see you know nations opening up, and God said, you know, it's time to go to the nations, and um, and I'm just you know seeing like lights coming up everywhere in the nations, and and uh, the whole sense that God was going to you know um, uh, move people, you know. To, travel back and forth, uh, travel to the nations, tell people to be ready to be transplanted into the nations. 
so that was kind of just the, that was happening. So while during worship, so when I went up to the stage, I just said, you know, and it was a very strange thing. I don't always say some stuff like this, but I just said, okay, this is a strange thing to say, you know, for me to tell the congregation. But I want to tell you, uh, based on what I, you know, felt, um, for people to be ready to be transplanted to the nations move from here to go and you're you know you'll feel that your seat is empty but god will bring somebody else in secondly some of us will go back and forth across to the nations and some of us will be here and from here we will impact the nations so i had a spiritual experience while standing in the audience seeing this these things and knowing it was god giving me this experience but when i went up in the stage i articulated it in in these words so that's one instance and then you know immediately so many things began to happen from the time i've spoken uh, there were several people who attested to, you know, all these three. Uh, one is people, so they said, this is a confirmation for us and about being transplanted to the nation. Somebody was just having these kind of situations where they had to travel back and forth to the nations. Uh, and uh, then most amazingly, uh, you know, and all this happened in a week. So yesterday somebody came in uh, and, you know, one of the big things in my heart was, God, I, uh, we need to be able to, you know, do work in the nations. But our limitation is uh, we are not able to send money outside of India. We are not legally allowed to do that. Uh, I was thinking of all our Bible college students, you know, uh, next year, many of you will be graduating. And I was thinking, God, we need to plant churches in the nations. Some of these students will want to start ministries. How do we help them in the nations? So we had all these thoughts in place. The only thing we didn't have was money you know, the ability to send money to the nations because we can't send it out of India. Just yesterday, somebody came, said, look, you know, I, we have all this amount of money in the US and we're going to get things, you know, we will get things organized, set up in the US. From there, we can send money to the nations. You know, so I was just amazed. And, you know, we will be sharing more details with our Bible college students. So literally, we are, we are getting things ready where we can help people start ministries, start churches in every nation of the world. You know, it all happened yesterday, you know, in, in the last one week after I spoke the word. You know, and it's just so, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, myself amazed how all of this. So the spiritual experience happened on 13th, within 20th, all of these things, many People have testified, and even this thing for something I was in my, carrying in my heart. God, how do we, you know, our students are going to graduate. Uh, we are, we need to start work in the nations. The only thing that's preventing us is this financial part, you know, because if you want to plant a church, you need money. How are we going to do it? And yesterday, everything was like God put it. Now, the only thing now is we incorporate the organization in the US. Uh, you know, most likely it'll be called APC World Missions. And we get that set up. Money is already available. People are, you know, it's huge amount already there. And then we're going to have a process where, you know, graduating students uh, submit, share their proposals, share their ideas. And then we pick up those ideas that, you know, we feel, uh, you know, those who want to start churches, those who want to, it's, we can do it. But all happened in one week. Where did it start? Uh, while during worship, there was this spiritual experience that I had. I went up to the stage and I just said, this is what God wants me to say. I know it sounds strange. And within one week, you know, so much has happened. So just one example. And you know, there were other examples. I mean, one thing that really touched my heart was... The previous Sunday, one man came and he was, you know, he was in a very, he was, I think he must have, he must be in his 40s or 50s. And he was in a bad shape, uh, meaning uh, financially didn't have a job, anything. So he came and I just prayed. And that time I, I, I actually spoke the word of the Lord over him, you know, and, and I told him, I said, you go get, you apply for jobs. God will bless you with a job which will give you more money than you've ever seen. Okay. So he's just come and I'm just saying this to him. And I, I, I said it not, you know, out of human thing. 
but I knew the hand of the Lord was on me and I spoke to him. Yesterday, after service, he came back. He said, I, he applied for one job and he went through two rounds of interviews already. He's got one last round of interview. He said, most likely he's going to get selected and it's going to give him so much money. Like, I don't know what the amount is on, but it's more than he, he needs more than ever before. And he came and said, I want to say thank you because you told me to do this. I did it. He applied for one job and this happened. So I, like for me, that is so special because here was a man who was in such a difficult situation. But it wasn't my word or my thought. It was more the anointing of God that I spoke that at that moment. And the good thing was he obeyed. He went and applied for one job. He said, okay, you know, Fasa told me I'll do it. And within a week, all this has taken place. So that's very special. So this is, again, another spiritual experience. You know, it may not be you know, it's, it's, it's special for that person. So like that, you know, there's things that happen. Some things are big, some things are small. It touches one individual, some things touch nations. But it's, it's, uh, it's all, everything is all God. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we are way out of time, um, but I'll, we will let you know, right? Once we get things set up and we'll be ready to go uh, impact nations. Okay, could somebody, uh, okay, let's just uh, uh, close this uh, session and uh, 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 we will take a break and uh, uh, we will connect to the next class shortly. Okay, thank you. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor.